Hey guys, today I am talking about really a miracle product or what I feel like is a miracle product and that is hydrogen peroxide. It has so many uses in the garden and I'm going to try to go over 20 or more that I know of and that really do work and will help your vegetables, flowers, anything in the garden that uh, you're growing and uh, it's really a great product. So I'll start by telling you some facts about hydrogen peroxide and its many uh, uses and do's and don'ts. So I wanted to give you some tips and uh, things that I know about hydrogen peroxide because I've used it for many, many years and found a lot of success from using it. Um, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2 and it's uh, water with an extra a atom of oxygen, if I can say that properly. So hydrogen peroxide is found in rainwater in small amounts. So it's not like this is some toxic uh, chemical that's been created by some big factory. So it does have that one extra oxygen atom in it. So it is safe. Um, there's different strengths. This is 3%. I use 3% only unless, uh, unless I could find the 30%. I'd like to try it on some things, but I just feel like it would be too tempting to put too strong of a strength on there and I might burn my plants. So I just stick with the 3%. There's 3%, 6%, or 30%, which is considered food grade. Um, some of the things I would say, I'm using a pressurized mister, and I would say don't use any type of mist when you're doing the hydrogen peroxide treatments on a windy day. That's not a good idea. So you want to make sure that it's on a very calm day and you want to make sure that you're holding the mist away from your face and that you don't breathe it because you don't want it getting into your lungs, even though it is a pretty naturally occurring thing. I wouldn't want it in the lungs because I believe it might burn your lungs. So just be careful about that. Um, let's see. You want to do a test spray on any plant that you're going to treat with the hydrogen peroxide. Do a small test on like maybe just a few leaves, wait 24 hours, then come back and take a look at it. If everything is okay, then you can do an overall spray, but you don't want to damage, uh, let's say a tomato or a cucumber or squash that you've worked so hard to get at a large size and it's being attacked by disease or pests. So you want to do a test spray first. So one last thing before we head out into the garden, um, wait till sunset or just before sunset before you apply this. You don't want to burn the leaves on the plant, even water, spraying just ordinary water on a plant leaf when the sun is in full, let's say 12 o'clock noon till late afternoon. You can still burn the plant because the water droplets can act as kind of a magnifying glass. So you make sure you wait till maybe 30 minutes, an hour before sunset or even after sunset is better if you have the time. So you can make sure that you don't accidentally burn your plants just from a, something like um, sun scorch, I guess you might call it. So anyways, let's head out to the garden and we'll look at some problems that exist there now. And then I'm going to use the hydrogen peroxide to correct. So here's an example of powdery mildew. You can see on some of these zucchini leaves. This one, it hasn't spread to this leaf, but it's definitely on that leaf and it's on some of the further back leaves. So I'm just going to do a light spraying on the top leaves. And I've used this before, so I guess you could say I've done my test to make sure. There's a little bit of a move this over a little bit so there is a little bit of a breeze i'm making sure i'm upwind of the breeze so i don't breathe any of the solution and i'm going to the great thing about this particular sprayer is you can tilt it up and you can get under the leaves a lot easier than you can if you had a basic handheld sprayer so i'm just going to go under each leaf and spray from beneath and that is a lot easier to do it like that And so that's how you treat powdery mildew. I'm going to recharge it there. Just make sure I get a good saturation amount on all the leaves so we can stop this disease before it progresses to a much worse state and every leaf is affected and we won't have any more zucchini being produced. So one thing I wanted to mention about, that I forgot to mention about the powdery mildew on the zucchini leaves is the mixture rate is 12 tablespoons per gallon. Now this is for plants that seem to have some problem with the soil. These strawberries that I planted are not doing well and I believe there could be a disease issue in the soil. So what I've done is I've added hydrogen peroxide to this uh, my gallon container, put it in this watering device, and it, we're gonna just put this at the base of each plant to try to kill off any bad funguses, bacteria, diseases that could be in the soil. Going to carefully put it at the base of each plant. 
it doesn't matter if it gets on the leaves a little bit but my main concern with this is is what is causing this problem in the soil so I'm just watering it down thoroughly and I'll come back and do this again in 24 hours and just do it a little at a time so this is a gallon watering can and I've, the mixture rate on this is two tablespoons per gallon so we're applying that to the base of each plant and I'll go around the rest of the garden and look and see if I can find some other plants that seem to possibly have a disease coming from the soil and that should help uh, that's tip number two I believe so the next thing is the next tip is seed germination and how to get your seeds off to a better start and soften the outer hole and also just make it easier for your seeds to germinate themselves so we're taking 10 tablespoons of the hydrogen peroxide putting it in a container and letting them soak overnight or for up to 24 hours and then you can send them off to the soil and they'll have a little bit of a head start with the hydrogen peroxide that's tip number three so tip number four involves your cutting tools and your garden tools one of the best ways to disinfect it is to just use a 50 50 mix of hydrogen peroxide and water spray it you'll remove any diseases any fungus anything you might transfer from plant to plant just make sure you wipe it down you don't put it up wet because you'll end up with rust and so that's tip number four tip number five is in the same vein seed starting trays you want to make sure you do the same thing if they're used because they could have disease or funguses in there so you'll just spray with that same mix that you use for your garden tools make sure you give it a good watering let it rinse out and so you can be assured the next time you start seeds you don't have to worry about diseases bacteria something that shouldn't be in the tray itself that could kill your seedlings and you wouldn't even know why same thing with uh, seed starting pots you can do the same thing but just giving each one a light spray and just letting it dry or wiping it out manually that's tip number five so the next use for the hydrogen peroxide and the next tip is if you're starting seeds and your seed starting mix is questionable or you don't know if it's contaminated with bacteria just to be on the safe side use the 10 tablespoons per gallon mixture water your seedling mix wait 24 hours and then you can use it to start your seed seeds your seed propagation your seedlings and you don't have to worry about there being a disease in there that's going to kill it and i believe it's uh, dampening off is the most common term that will kill those uh, new seedlings they come out and there's a disease in there you don't know so that's always a good idea to do that 24 hours before you put in the seed so tip number seven is something that you'll do over and over once a week add one tablespoon of the hydrogen peroxide to your watering can and you can water that in and it will help aerate the soil and really help the plant produce more or if it's a flower or shrub you really like it will definitely do better with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide once a week and that is i believe tip number seven so as far as wicking buckets go it's the same thing but maybe the concentration is going to be just a little bit less this is six tablespoons per gallon and you just add that to your wicking bucket on the top of the soil surface and that is tip number eight tip number nine is regarding insects you can see some insect damage here on these crooked neck squash and so i'm going to add the i'm going to spray the hydrogen peroxide on the underside of the leaves this is six tablespoons per gallon so i'm just kind of doing an all overall spray on the top side of the leaves and the underside we are at the end of the season so these these are not looking near as good as they did just a month ago but i can see insects flying off of them and so there are insects on these and this solution will help that is tip number nine okay tip number 10 is also with the the uh, some funguses are starting on this squash so i want to use this as a general fungicide i'm just going to do underneath on top and so we can stop from any funguses from growing in the soil and again it's 10 tablespoons per gallon okay this is tip number 11 and this is about speeding decomposition of rotting matter in your garden so you're going to bury this in the garden at the soil level we've got a way too much mulch in here but you may correct that next year by blending it 
But anyways, we're going to put that in there. This is a 50-50 mix of 50% water, 50% hydrogen peroxide. We're going to douse that heavily. And we're going to cover it back up. And that will also speed up decomposition. And since it's buried, we don't have to worry about animals or bugs bothering it. I'm planning on making a video about burying your leftover produce around the edges of your raised bed. And that will be coming up in another video. But that is tip number 11. So tip number 12 is also about controlling pests in the garden. It's just a general pest control. But the difference in this, this formulation is one part hydrogen peroxide, eight parts water. If you have a severe infestation, if something is eating your plants, you're going to need it stronger. And of course, you want to do a test spray, but you're still going to just spray all over, underside of leaves, on top, just an overall spray. Do your test spray and wait 24 hours, then come back and then just douse it. So that is if you have a severe infestation. The previous insect control was if you have a little bit less of infestation, but this is if the infestation has gotten out of control, this is the formulation you'll want to use. Okay, so these are really healthy and there's no issues with them right now, but there is some bugs on there. But this is about disease prevention. Every seven days, you'll want to do this. Spray six tablespoons per gallon just all over every seven days. And you can prevent diseases before they start. And it's a lot easier to prevent rather than it is to try and cure. So this is tip for that. And I've lost count of tips. I believe this is tip number 13. Tip number 13, disease prevention. Can you tell me what this is and what Asian food is used in specifically? Leave a comment if you know. So tip number 14 is about leaf spot and you can see there's some of that happening here. This is also six tablespoons per gallon. And so you're just gonna do the same thing that you've done with the other diseases. Leaf spot can often be caused by excessive moisture, rain, uh, overwatering, and so that can sometimes happen. So this is a good good way to prevent that, and that's num tip number 14. So this is tip number 15, and this is about chemical removing or removing chemicals from leaves of plants that you might have treated earlier in the season. So far this year, I've used no chemicals other than just natural solutions to the product. So you're gonna spray that directly on the leaves. And that again is six tablespoons per gallon. Do a test spray as always. And some of those chemicals that might be on the leaves, powders, residues, will wash off and be diluted by using hydrogen peroxide. So tip number 16 is about soil aeration and adding extra uh, oxygen to the soil. So you're going to do a 50-50 mix before you plant seedlings or any plants that you're purchase from the big box store or if you're growing yourself just add a thorough amount to the soil in the area that you're planning on starting your new vegetables flowers whatever it is and that will help aerate the soil and give it a healthier growing condition and a head start and all all the uh, plants do need that and that will definitely help that is tip number 16. Okay, tip number 17 is in the same vein, so I haven't moved from this spot because I wanted to tell you that doing that also not only helps with aeration, it helps the plant uh, absorb nutrients from the soil. So again, same formulation, and that's tip number 17. So tip number 18 is a simple vegetable wash. You're going to add 10 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide to one gallon of water. You're going to put them in the sink. You're going to wash them and that will help get it rid of any funguses or anything else that might be on it. Don't you hate buying strawberries and a week later they're all ruined? You do this and this will prevent the fungus from growing on your strawberries. Just make sure you rinse them well after you get through with the hydrogen peroxide wash. So tip number 19 is about cuts and scrapes as you work in the garden. If you scratch yourself on thorn bushes or cut yourself in some minor cuts, you can use this as an antibacterial solution, put it directly on the cut, and that will kill any germs or bacteria that might be in the cut or wound. And that's pretty much, a, I think it actually says that on the bottle, is an antiseptic for, for cuts and small wounds. So that's another thing. But if it's a major wound, you want to go to your doctor and not just use this. 
So tip number 20 is using it at full strength as a weed killer. Now that's not for broad areas and large areas because I've got another video about how to make that in a four gallon sprayer. But this is just if you have weeds in a crack or a crevice and you want to get rid of them quickly, just use it at 100% full strength, spray it on there and in a short amount of time, those weeds will die quickly because it, it is too, too heavy of a concentration at 100% for anything else. So that's when you want to use full strength is on cuts or on weeds. That is tip number 20. So that's the 20 tips I have. And there's probably a few other things that I didn't cover, such as aphid control, um, root rot, 10 tablespoons per gallon, um, soaking, the, uh, soaking perlite in a, in a container. And let's see, 10 tablespoons per gallon, put perlite in, soak it, let it drain out, then put your seeds in and put a little bit of water in there. And that will help speed up the germination time as well because the perlite, perlite absorbed a little bit of the um, hydrogen peroxide and a little bit of the water. So that can help. Also, probably the last thing, and probably everybody knows this, is it's a mouthwash and you can make a toothpaste out of hydrogen peroxide if you mix it with baking soda. And supposedly that will whiten your teeth. So that's an interesting out of the garden idea as well. Hey guys, so I wanted to say thanks for watching and I really appreciate each and every one of you. Each time I see a new subscriber, it really makes me feel good. And anytime anyone leaves a comment, I always try to respond. I know that at some point, if there's too many comments, that may not be possible, but I'll try as long as I can to give you a response. Anyways, today's moment of Zen is one of my favorite bonsai. In American say bonsai, but in Japan they call it bonsai. And so I'll try to get a close up here. This is a Kingsville boxwood. And believe it or not, this tree is probably 25 years old. I've owned it for 15 years. And so it's a really good example of Kingsville boxwood. They were discovered in America, although most people think that they are Japanese. But it's an American discovery in Vermont, I believe, at a small nursery they discovered this variety. So you often see boxwood next to driveways, and the leaves are much, much larger. You can see the full-grown leaves on this tree are tiny tiny so anyways that's the moment of zen today and i hope you uh, like it as much as i do have a great day